Hello. Someone asked, how can we combine human workflows with work items? There's a couple of ways we can do this, but I'm going to show one of the more simple ways that we can do this. Simple being a little bit relative, but you'll see. <laughs> so in order to assign a human workflow, we first need a workflow. So let's create a simple workflow here. Let's call this uh, validate invoice. I'm going to enable it for web so I can test it in the browser. Um, now, in order for, for this workflow to be shown, I need a form. So I'm going to go to forms, I'm going to add a form, I'm going to create a validate invoice form. And I'm going to add a text field called name. And I'm going to add a number called amount. And I'm going to add a button for this lining. There we go. So, and lastly, we're going to add a uh, option for actually watching the files. Um, yeah. So, if I now add a switch statement, I can go in and say if submit button equals submit or this line, uh, do something based on that. So if we don't have anything, we're going to show the invoice form and we're going to go idle. And once we have something, we're going to complete it and go back to the front page. Basic workflow here. So if I now go to forms, I have my validate invoice. I can start an instance. I can see some information. I can type a number. I can submit and I'm done. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop an item of a work item queue. So inside work item queues, I created two queues, an invoice queue and an invoice to SAP. So the idea is that we add invoices to the invoice queue and we need to validate all of them, some of them, we can add all kinds of logic here. And then once we're done, we push it to the invoice to SAP queue. Um, I'm not, I don't know if we're gonna manage all of it in this video, but uh, that's the idea. So I'm gonna add an inject so I can test it. And what I'm testing here is that I wanna pop an item of uh, invoice queue. So I'm gonna pop invoice queue. And um, so I could assign it to the payload, but that's gonna give us a lot of problems. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, save the work item in a, in message.work item. And the next thing I'm going to do is, um, so, so I, I could accept it in the queue and I could then set the work item as successful. And, and, but, and depending on how you want to report on this and how you want to monitor it and how you want to send reminders to people if they haven't filled out the form, there's different ways we can do this. But just to keep it very, very simple and basic, I'm simply going to leave the item pending uh, processing while we wait on the user to fill out the form. And then once the user have filled out the form, we then set the work item as processed. So once we get a work item, uh, yeah, I'm gonna assign validate invoice to myself. So this could be a role, this could be a user, uh, just for demo sake, I'm gonna just gonna assign the workflow to myself. So assign will create a new workflow instance and assign it to either user or role. And when that user uh, or users of that role log in, they can see it on the front page that they have things they need to do. We could also send an email notifying people that there's something for them. 
no, whatever. Um, once that has been completed, so as soon as it has been created, we will get something out of this scheduled uh, node. But once the user have completed the form, we will get something out of result and we will get the result of the form that the user filled out. So what we can do here, just to, again, just to keep it simple, I can simply say update the work item and we save them in work item and we're just gonna set it to successful. That's it. Um, so I really wanna keep the, the, the payload from the work item and use it inside the form. So the way that I am adding an invoice right now is I'm, I made this simple workflow here. And the workflow here basically takes a file from the disk called invoice.pdf. And to simulate that this is a real invoice and I have something about it, I'm gonna add a name and an amount from what is on that invoice as part of the payload. So when I run this, I now get a work item and that work item has a payload with a name and an amount. And what happened with my file? Downloads. Oh. The power of cleaning up. So let's delete that and run it again. So now I have a work item and inside the work item, I have some simulated amounts and I have an attached file invoice.pdf and I can actually click it and download it and I can see the invoice. So now if I go to node red, I can actually take the payload from the work item and set that as the payload and that will be the payload of the form. And then to show the user the file, I'm going to set dot file to an array of the files and I'm going to add one file. And the important thing here is that I have a name and I gave a, a URL for the file. So that would be slash upload ID and then the ID of the file. So now when you open that form, it will actually have a file inside the form. Um, so just to see when things are happening, let's add a debug node. So uh, let's add a debug node showing that we got an item and we assigned it. And let's add a debug node when we completed the form like that. So I'm going to click submit or inject. And as soon as I did that, I get a message over here that I got an item and it is now assigned something, but it didn't activate the last part over here. So if I now go here, I now have a workflow assigned to me called validate invoice. And if I open that, I can now see the name and the amount and I can download the file. And here's the invoice. And I can now submit or design this file. Um, and whatever I click right now, will just accept it. But the point is, I can now start looking at the button that the user clicked and based on that, I can disline or accept a work item. Um, so if I go to work items, you will now see it is successful. So let's try that again. It is new. I submit it. And now it's processing and it will stay in processing until I actually filled out the form. And once I fill out the form, there we go. The work item is now successful. Um, so I could actually now add some logic here and say, in case, uh, so we could say here, if the button is, uh, submit its top. So here it is successful and we could say down here, here it is uh, failed. So if I retry it and I submit it, if I fill out the form and click submit, the work item is successful. If I resubmit it, Uh, oh yeah, need to click. 
There we go. Resubmitted. Uh, and this time I'm going to disline it. It is now failed. So I can now fail or make a work item be successful or fail based on clicking a button on a form. And while I'm waiting on the user to fill out the form, the work item is processing. So I could now create a report and send reminders to people if they have you know, pending things they need to do or, or whatever I might do. Again, we could make this a lot more complex, but at least this is one way of combining work items with human workflows. I hope this is helpful.